In this video, we are going to present you elements about Douglas Quaid library. How to install it, how to configure it, how to use it. First, we invite you to go on the GitHub page of Douglas Quaid. You can find a lot of information on this page. How the library works, diagrams, developers documentation, links to official papers. But let's start step by step. Copy and paste the HTTPS address of the GitHub repository and clone it. Git clone HTTPS colon slash slash GitHub. Com. Install the Python virtual environment with perpenf install then wait for completion. It will download dependencies without altering your system. While waiting for the perpenf creation to complete, you can give a look at next installation instructions. After that the perpenf is created, you can go into the perpenf. When inside, you are no longer able to reach system-wise installed libraries. Now, you need to manually install a third-party library, TLSH. Do so, by enabling execution of its installation script with chmod plus x. TLSH underscore install. You can then install Redis. Even if Pyadis is installed by the perpenf, Redis itself need to be on the system. Exact instructions depends on your system. For Ubuntu, for instance, type sudo apt-get install redis. Already installed on the demonstration system. To do so in a temporary way, execute source script export underscore env underscore variables. Sh environment variables will be set until you leave the virtual env. Server is booting. Server is ready when press a key to stop is appear and no error is shown up to this line. That's all for the installation. As we've already seen, Douglas Quaid needs some environment variables to be set. In this part, we will see how to set up this variables in permanent way. First, create a file named Please copy or keep note of the path where you cloned Douglas Quaid repository. Open the file with your favorite text editor. And add two lines to the file, two variables. Pythonpath equals path u noted down carlhauser underscore home equals path u noted down. Exit and save the file. On the next launch of Perpenf Shelly won't need to manually set up environment variables anymore. For instance, if you get into the Perpenf Perpenf shell and try to launch the server Python 3. Instance underscore launcher. PY, the server is running without issue. That all for environment variable setup.
Now, let's see how to interact with Douglas Quaid server. First, of course, launch the server. For that, don't forget to go less than b greater than into less than b greater than the perpenv, otherwise, you'll encounter dependencies errors. When server is ready, you can follow instructions for the client side and API calls. First, go into Karlhauser underscore client API to find client side API functions. Let's try now to send picture to the server. You can use Python 3. API CLI. PY to access client function without writing any line of code. You can then specify the action you want to perform. Then you specify the folder of pictures you want to send. These pictures will be stored in the server. When a picture is uploaded, the server give back a new UID v5 deterministic. The mapping from the original file name on your computer and the UUID set by the server is stored in a file mapping. This file is then used in next calls to server as a translation table between UUID used in every data structure returned by the server and your file's names. You now have to wait for all pictures to be uploaded. On the left terminal, you can see that the server is received and processing requests. On the right terminal, you can see that the client here via the CLI is sending pictures one by one to the server. Eventually, all pictures are sent. The mapping file was saved. Let's open it. The exact location depends on what path you gave on the CLI launch. You here see the file, a translation table between files names on the left on the server's UUID on the right. That's all for sending pictures to the server. The process is similar. Here we call the API with a request argument, specifying path to the picture to be request, and specifying the mapping file for the result to be with our names. Equivalent programmatic ways are exposed on the Douglas Quaid GitHub page. We see that the server received the request and answered it. Result was sent back to client and stored in a file. On top of the file we find the best matching clusters. Next, we find the list of matching pictures. Each match is a picture, with the cluster underscore it belongs to, the decision of the algorithm, is it a match or not? The exact distance between request picture on this one, and the id, name of the image. At the end of the file, we also have the name of the requested picture and the time taken to process the request. 
Please note that usually, the first match is the same picture, if it has already been stored in the database. Now, let's see how to install VISJS Classificator, to display libraries results and cluster pictures. Again, most of the information is on the GitHub page of VISJS Classificator. Please clone the repository with the HTTPS link. Many visualizations and examples are presented on the GitHub page. Now, go into the cloned repository, cdvisjs underscore classificator, and launch the library installation with npm install. The same way as the perpenv, it will download and install relevant dependencies. You can now launch visjs classificator with node, server, js and a few arguments. First argument, the folder of picture to use for display. The names have to be consistent with the ones in the graph file, as you provide one later. Two more arguments, a temporary folder to store reduced version of the picture, and an output folder to store eventual outputs. If VISJS network is not recognized as a correct dependency, feel free to download it with npm install VISJS network. VISJS server is launched, and is reducing size, resolution, of all input pictures. This implies that you may have to wait a bit being able to access the server. You can then try to access localhost 3000 default port to get access to the user interface. You may have to wait a bit until the graph is loaded. You can then navigate in the pictures, move them, link them together, create clusters. You can also modify physics options, to get a faster rendering or a nicer display. That's all for VISJS Classificator installation. Let's now see how to get the storage graph out of Douglas Quaid server. First, the storage graph represents the way the server is storing picture. This graph is less than b greater than not less than b greater than intended to be an image matching solution. The Douglas Quaid GitHub page presents a programmatic way to dump this graph out of the server. We will however do it with CLI. The same way, we call API py but with the dump argument. We specify an output file for the dump db dump file. JSON and the mapping, as we want our names to be displayed and not serve as UUIDs. A list of cluster, a list of picture, and a list of edges. Quite a standard graph structure, clusters aside. We stop the server, not control plus C, but just by pressing a key and validating. Now, we load the storage graph dump JSON into VISJS classificator to visualize it. 
The only argument we add to the ISJS classificator's launch is J to specify the JSON graph structure to load. The file has been loaded successfully nt error in terminal and we can reach localhost 3000 as soon as the server finishes picture reducing. Please note that VISJS classificator is collaborative and more than one user at a time can access and modify the graph. Modifications are shared across all current users. Pictures may take a while to load in your browser. Please wait. We can already see clusters of pictures. Even if these set of pictures look usable for image matching, this is not why this graph is intended to perform. The purpose of the storage graph is to group pictures to prevent unnecessary comparisons. A lot of pictures in one cluster, or a lot of pictures alone generates latency in request, adding time. Looking at this graph may explain why the library is slow, one of the two previous cases, see algorithmic problems, etc. This is for debug purposes only. When all pictures are loaded, you can see a lot more clusters, and the meaning they have. Even if some pairs are challenging, the library managed to group them. That's all for storage graph visualization with VISJS classificator. Let's now see how to modify the configuration of Douglas Quaid server. All configuration files of the server are stored in Carl has a underscore server configuration. There are four configuration files database configuration, distance once, feature extractor one, and web service one. Database configuration defines paths to sockets, expiration time for request, number of workers of each type, test, monitoring mode. Distance configuration file defines number of cluster to keep, number of matches to returns, some algorithms parameters.
Feature Extractor configuration defines worker number for feature extraction, which algorithms are enabled with which parameters and thresholds. Web service configuration defines path to certificates and IP port of API endpoint. Let's now modify which algorithms we want to be enabled. Open feature underscore extractor configuration with your favorite text editor. You can then modify activated algorithms true, false, thresholds, yes underscore to underscore maybe, maybe underscore to underscore no, weight of this algo indecisions. That's all for configuration modification. In Karlhauser underscore client and Karlhauser underscore server folders, you can find the logging ini file. You can change the logging level between debug, info, warning, error and critical. We'll set error for the following. You may also want to disable file logging to prevent big logs file from growing if you set logging below error level. You see that server logs are much lighter. That's all for logging modification. Let's see how to sample pictures from your own big production dataset. You have a large dataset and you want to sample it. A script is provided in script sampler. Copy the sampler. SH in your folder of pictures to sample MV. Script sampler. SH. Slash dot dot. Create a folder above your folder of pictures named sampled mkdir sampled. Execute sampler. Delete the sampler. At each execution of the sampler, 10 pictures are sampled. If you want more, launch it again. And again. Etc. Now you can load this small dataset in VISJS classificator and cluster it. You'll generate a ground truth file that can then be used in advanced configuration of the library. You load the sample dataset without J option as you don't have any JSON file to provide you're about to create it. The sample dataset is loaded in VISJS and you are ready to cluster it. That's all about sampling pictures. You can move pictures, but due to physics, they may move.
you can group similar pictures together. Control plus click to select more than one picture at a time. When you're happy with these groups, you can formally cluster them, right click plus drag to select the group of picture, and press C to create a cluster out of the selection. Do this for each group. If pictures are alone, put them in their own cluster. At the end, you can also toggle on the physics for a nice display of your work. Be sure you have finished. You can also toggle on off hyperf to show rectangle around cluster for even nicer display. Eventually, you can download the graph clusters in a JSON file compatible with Douglas Quaid inputs. Put this graph file aside, ready to be used as input for next advanced steps. Here, I put it next to the dataset folder I'm using. That's all for ground truth file creation. Now, let's extract the similarity graph out of Douglas Quaid server. For this task, you can directly call the Carl has a underscore client similarity underscore graph underscore extractor py script. You can give three things a folder of pictures to upload, an output folder, and a ground truth optional that can be used to measure the quality of the matching. Now, all pictures are uploaded to the server, added to storage graph. When all pictures are uploaded, all are requested one by one. and the resulting graph is created and exported.
Still waiting. Now the graph had been exported. The graph JSON file was written in the output folder Sahir in similarity graph extractor. It took me a while to see where it was. Two graphs were created, a distance graph with true distance on each edge, and a yes underscore maybe underscore no graph with specific distance for each decision below zero. 25 for yes below zero. 5 for maybe below zero. That's all for similarity graph extraction. Let's now see how to visualize the extracted similarity graph. Let's launch VISJS classificator with the extracted similarity graph from Douglas Squid. You must also provide the source folder of picture. The one you gave to the similarity graph extractor is the easiest. You must also specify with J the graph JSON path to be loaded in VISJS classificator. Here is the similarity graph. This graph is intended to be used for image matching. You see that each picture had been linked to other picture with a distance and a decision. Decision can be yes, maybe or no. Distances are between 0 and 1 included both. 0 is close Euclidean distance and 1 is very different. Green link is the first match, yellow link is second match, red, gray link is third match, etc. Let's now load the yes, maybe, no graph. In this graph, distances are not the distance given by the library, but a representation of the decision. On the bottom right of the ISJS classificator, you can threshold the edges to show by the distance. This means that in the yes, maybe, no graph, you can threshold depending on the decision.
That's all for the similarity graph visualization. Let's see how to calibrate Douglas squared. You need three elements, a sample data set of your production data, a ground truth file, and some directives, minimum true positive, etc. Go in common, calibrator to find relevant algorithms. Directives are what you expect the library to ensure, rate of false positive, true positive, etc. You have few ways to express what you want, not saying it keeping default targets, give a configuration file or express it directly with arguments. Here we express it directly with arguments. Here, we are going to choose the acceptable rate of false positive and the acceptable rate of false negative 10% both of them, so 0, 1. We could also have chosen the minimum true positive negative rate at 90% for example, and so 0. The calibration algorithm is about to be launched, it creates one test instance per activated algorithm. In each instance, only one algorithm is enabled. Be aware of the order of arguments, source folder s, ground truth file, gt, output o, argument type, from underscore cmd underscore args, and options, afnr0, 1 afpr0. Best thresholds are extracted from this quality graph and constitutes the good thresholds for this algorithm. The calibration can take a while. Please wait until it finishes. Time is heavily dependent on the number of algorithms activated and the size of the input dataset. Here are the results, in the results folder specified on command launch. One folder is created per algorithm evaluated. At the root level of the results folder, we have modified version of configuration files. The values in these files needs to manually be copied to your configuration file. You see in the calibrated underscore algo. Jason the best threshold found for each algorithm. Please note that you should review these threshold manually to check for sanity. Yes underscore to underscore maybe below maybe underscore to underscore no, etc. You also have the full configuration file of the server overwritten with computed values. You also have the configuration file which defines the threshold which say this picture is in a new cluster or not.
Let's see what's inside one folder. So, for one algorithm only, here are ANSAC. You have five graphs, a graph with the full network not considering decisions, but with lines of the chosen thresholds, a graph with with yes matches only, one with maybe matches only, one with yes and maybe matches only, and one with no matches only.